All right, baby, it's Sunday morning. Rain is falling. You know what that means. It's time to go over onto that article on The Athletic written by Max Boltman the other day and talk about another one of these names that he has said could be a potential Red Wings trade candidate. Now, we had talked about this a few videos ago. We made a video talking about Brock Besser, Vancouver Canucks forward, and the idea of him potentially being a Red Wings trade target. But we cited an article from The Athletic the other day that pretty much lists out a bunch of these forwards where Boltman says, hey, these guys could be guys that the Red Wings set their sights on. Who really knows? The article was published on May 17th. The link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this yourself. But the deal is the same as last time. There are a whole bunch of names. Boltman goes out and writes about these names in the context of the Red Wings potentially pursuing them. And the one at the very top of the list is none other than Toronto Maple Leafs forward William Nylander. Now, we had made our video yesterday talking about Kyle Dubas, the departure or the quote-unquote firing that he exhibited at the hands of Brendan Shanahan and the rest of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and because there's been such a shift in Toronto, because there's so much change that is set to happening with the departure of Dubas and the departure of Spezza at the same time, you may have to start asking yourself, okay, what does the future hold for William Nylander? What does it hold for Austin Matthews? Two guys that are going to be expiring UFAs heading into next year. They're eligible for contract extensions once the summer commences this year. So right away, you kind of have to say, all right, if the Toronto Maple Leafs really want to keep things in their best interest, they've got to sign Nylander quick. They've got to sign Matthews quick. They cannot go into next season without a contract to these guys. Because you saw what happened with John Tavares. You saw what happened with Johnny Gaudreau. Sure, you could have a good team. You could be successful. You could be the captain or one of the best players in the league. But when nature calls, nature calls. These players leave sometimes. And for Nylander and Matthews to be in the same spot heading into next year, it spells doom and gloom for anybody in Toronto that does not think the team is going to be able to re-sign them to extensions right away. And so when you think about Nylander and what he could potentially be for any other NHL team out there, let's go out there and look at the profile and just acknowledge this first. Nylander is 27 years old, 5'11", 196, right-handed right-wing guy. Signed to the end of this season, making $6.9 million a year. Excuse me, the end of next season, 2024, right. Next season is when he gets trade protection. He's got a modified no-trade clause, so he can only be traded to a few number of teams. But last season, Nylander had himself a career year for the ages. 87 points, 82 games played, 40 goals, 47 assists. Now, I'm kind of repeating myself because we had just made a video talking about Nylander and the Colorado Avalanche. We made that video because there were some insiders on, I think it was Sportsnet somewhere, talking about the idea of Nylander being placed on the trade block and how the Avalanche might come knocking on the Maple Leafs' door. But this conversation is a tad different. If it is Nylander to Detroit instead, there are a few other things you have to go out there and consider. Firstly, the price for Nylander, a lot higher than the price for Besser. You could talk a lot about the roles, the handiness. Besser and Nylander are both right-handed right-wing players, so they would fill the same role on the team, essentially, if they were acquired by Detroit. But Nylander is better than Besser, so you're probably going to be shelling out a lot more assets for that. And Nylander is only one draft season ahead of Brock, too, so it's not like he's significantly older than Besser as well. Furthermore, when it comes to what Nylander could be on an NHL team, I feel like most teams could realistically have Nylander as a top six, top line even, producing caliber player. A guy who can go out there with 70, 80 points a year. There is some debate you could bring up. Hey, the guy is playing with Matthews and Tavares and Marner the entire time, so... Who's to say his numbers were not inflated? Well, the thing is, when you have these guys that are as talented as the Marners and the Matthewses and the Tavareses, the guys that are all making over $10 million a year, when Nylander is the player that outplays them in the postseason, especially in round two against Florida... That's how you know that Nylander is legit. This has been sort of the pattern over the past few years. Whenever things have gone wrong for Toronto, it's always, ah, oh, Matthews and Marner didn't show up. Ah, oh, Marner shot the puck over the glass. Ah, oh, we lost out in Tavares because of Corey Perry's knee. That's unfortunate. But the one who always comes to play and who always shows up better than his other counterparts on the team is William Nylander. 
He's always there, and there's a lot of value to be found in that. He is a gamer, he shows up, he does not fold under pressure, he seemingly gets better when the games get more difficult, and it's the complete opposite of the guys making almost double his AAV. It's wild. This guy's due for a pay raise, and the Toronto Maple Leafs might not be the team to go out there and get that done. So, if it's a team like Detroit, for example, you trade away a boatload of stuff, you get Nylander in return, you have Nylander and Larkin playing together, pretty nice, speedy, complimentary pairing right there, then maybe it works out. We talked the other day about Brock Besser. We said he was slow. We said his foot speed definitely isn't there. He's good at winning board battles, though, and playing the right way when he doesn't have the puck. He can get rebound goals. He can get dirty garbage tapping goals. Nylander can do a lot more. And he could do a lot more at a high-flying pace, too, which kind of helps blend in with the other players like Larkin and Raymond on the team. Of course, having Raymond and Nylander as two right-wing, right-handed guys who are from Sweden as well on the same team, probably a little bit of a conflict of interest there. But at the same time, if you really wanted to shelter Raymond's minutes, you could give him that second-line opportunity and put Nylander on the first line with a guy like Larkin instead. It's a very flexible sort of situation, and having both of these guys on the power play together would be a very nice way to grow and develop Raymond's game. But of course, the question comes down to what the return could be. Nylander, coming into a contract year, is valued differently than Nylander at X amount of years at $6.9 million a season. His contract right now is a steal for the services he provides. And so, what's the price you're willing to pay for one year's worth of that contract and the ability to negotiate with him before the free agency period? Is it a first? Is it a first and a roster player? Is it a first, a roster player, and a good prospect like Amadeus Lombardi, for example? There are some other guys we could have tossed out there. I just wanted to say Lombardi's name because it sounds cool. But if you're a Wings fan, let me know in the comments all your opinions about what it would take for you to comfortably trade for William Nylander. What do you think is a package that you would say yes to? And what do you think is a package that's more realistic? One that you wouldn't say yes to if you were Detroit and Stevie Y. It's difficult to really play this game, I feel, because Steve Eiserman is so good at winning trades consistently that it's difficult to even try to go against the man. But if you're a Maple Leafs fan, what are your thoughts on what it would take to get Nylander off your team? And do you think the Red Wings have what it takes to get that done? What is it from Detroit that you would want in a Nylander return? Don't just go out there and say we want Raymond Sider and Edvinson. Be realistic about it, and be a little bit cautious too, because I know a lot of Red Wings fans tune into this channel once in a while, and they're very passionate about their team, to say the least. So, if you're a fan of the Maple Leafs or the Red Wings, what are your thoughts on the idea of Nylander heading over to Detroit? Again, the link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read the article. Max Boltman does a good job at compiling all of these individual ideas and puts them together to see some other names. There are 11 guys on this article, and Brock Besser, Nylander, these are just two of them. So, we've got a lot more videos to make throughout the summer talking about Red Wings trade targets. Man, this is why I love these types of articles. It gives me fodder for the rest of the gosh darn off season, but thoughts in the comment section either way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Scrolls 99 and bye.